Hey YouTube, in this video, we're going to be doing a deep dive look at Curve Shaper. This is the new feature that debuted with the launch of the Ryzen 9000 CPUs. For the demo that we're going to be looking at, we're going to be using a 9700X. The same principles apply whether you have the 9600X all the way up to the 9950X. At its core, what the Curve Shaper does is it breaks up the voltage frequency curve that you're familiar with from using Curve Optimizer previously into five regions. So we have the minimum frequency region, which AMD considers is the idle frequency or the minimum frequency. This is typically not going to be relevant for what we're going to be doing because this is for frequencies that are below four gigahertz. So think of like three gigahertz range. The downside of Curve Optimizer in the past was that when you applied a very aggressive negative offset to lower, to effectively undervolt the CPU, sometimes, depending on the silicon, the lower region was unstable. So you could get freezing, blue screening, crashing, because at idle, there wasn't enough voltage because Curve Optimizer does a blanket undervolt on every single point along the voltage frequency curve. Now with Curve Shaper, that fixes the problem because now we can leave the minimum and as well as the low frequency, which is also background, which would typically be four gigahertz to 4.5 gigahertz, that's going to be the low frequency range. We can leave that alone and it's no longer impacted by applying an aggressive undervolt. So we're gonna take a look at how to improve gaming performance how to improve multi-thread performance and get better results out of the silicon by utilizing Curve Shaper in conjunction with the other tools that are previously available, namely PBO and Curve Optimizer. But first, a word from our sponsor. We often talk a lot about video game performance when comparing PC hardware on this channel, but are you thinking about what it would be like to program games to better take advantage of the hardware? That brings me to the sponsor of this video, Southern New Hampshire University, or SNHU. Southern New Hampshire University's online game development program gives you the knowledge and experience to create your own video games and help turn it into an actual career with opportunities for growth. You'll learn how to bring characters and environments to life with 2D and 3D modeling, texturing, and game physics. How to create dynamic and challenging experiences developing game AI. The university program covers major programming languages like C++, C Sharp, and Java, all fundamental to game programming. The courses are taught by faculty with real-world experience, so you'll have opportunities to connect and network with people in industry. The university also helps after graduation with the job hunt process. SNHU is accredited and has radically affordable tuition. SNHU was voted one of the country's most innovative universities by U.S. News & World Report. Go to snhu.edu slash gtr, also linked in the description of this video, to see if you qualify for SNHU's game development program or to simply learn more. You might be eligible for financial aid or have previous college credits transfer over to fast-track your degree at SNHU. Click the link to get started. The other three regions that Curve Shaper introduces is medium, high, and maximum. Medium is going to be your typical all-core workload. So think of Cinebench R23 runs, Prime 95, etc. Anything that's going to heavily load the CPU, typically it's going to have to fall back to a frequency in the medium range, which would be anywhere from 4.5 gigahertz to 5 gigahertz. So that's the medium frequency range based off of my own testing. Now, these ranges could vary a little bit, but in general, you can use this table as a frame of reference when trying to figure out how to use Curve Shaper to improve the performance. So for medium frequency, this is going to be very beneficial for multi-thread benchmarks. And then for high frequency, high frequency is going to benefit gaming workloads or gaming performance. This is typically in the range of 5 to 5.5 gigahertz. So if we were to break up this chart into regions here, we can see that the medium region is from 4.5 to 5. The high region is 5.0 to 5.5. And then the max frequency region is going to be the remaining from, you know, when you go beyond 5.5. So we have medium, high, and max. The two that we're going to focus on, because the two that give you the biggest uplift, is medium 
and high. Those two regions provide the biggest uplift around 9% just from doing these tweaks. You can get 8 to 9, maybe even 10%, depending on the silicon. You can get a pretty good bump in performance for multi-thread and gaming just from tuning medium and high curve shaper regions. For every one of these five regions, there are three temperature ranges. That's why when we say 15 different parameters, there's five regions and three temperature ranges. So that's five times three, that's 15 different parameters. So we're going to be looking primarily at medium temperature and high temperature because medium temperature is around 50 degrees Celsius. So from 50 to around 80, that's gonna be considered medium and that's gonna typically be the operating temperature while gaming. High temperature is gonna come into play when doing stress tests or multi-thread benchmarks if you're overclocking to try to set world records, for example. However, most people that are gonna be setting world records are gonna be using the low temperature range because they're going to be using insane cooling like dry ice or phase change or LN2, which means they're gonna be running sub-zero temperatures. So low temperature, this range doesn't really apply for what we're doing because we're not using extreme cooling. So for demonstration purposes, we're going to be using a Gigabyte X670 Aorus Elite AX. So this is one of the decent value motherboards, I would say, that gives you all the functionality that you need to get better performance. With the latest BIOS, they introduce the 105 watt TDP mode. I highly recommend using this mode because this improves the power limit so that it is more in line with the 7700X versus the 7700, which is how the 9700X actually came out stock. And then if you're in a gigabyte motherboard, it's very easy to get to the curve shaper. You just go to advanced CPU settings, and then you go to precision boost overdrive. And then in here, we're going to set this to advanced. And now we can see at the very bottom curve shaper is available. So if you're not on a gigabyte motherboard, for example, if you're on ASRock, the way you would access this menu is you would go over to settings or advanced and then you would go to AMD overclocking and you would accept the warning. And then here you can see precision boost overdrive. And then here is the exact same menu for Curve Shaper. So when we go into Curve Shaper, you'll see the 15 different parameters, five regions. So we have minimum, low, medium, high, and maximum. Those are the five regions. Then you have three temperatures. You have low temperature, medium temperature, and high temperature for every single region. Like I said before, medium is where the multi-thread will benefit. High is where the gaming will benefit. So we're gonna go to medium frequency and we're going to apply, we're gonna set this to enable. Then we're going to say negative. Then we're going to apply a negative magnitude. The magnitude basically is the same as what you did in Curve Optimizer, whether they're a negative offset or a positive offset. So you can kind of think of it like Curve Optimizer, but it only affects the medium frequency range. This only applies to 4.5 to 5 gigahertz. So this is low temperature. So this is basically if you're sub zero. We're not sub zero, so this isn't really gonna do anything. So we need to go to the medium temperature range. Medium temperature is going to be around 50 degrees Celsius. We're going to also apply a negative 15 offset for the magnitude. And then for the high temperature, which is going to be around 90 degrees Celsius or 80 degrees to 95 degrees Celsius, we're also going to apply a negative 15 magnitude. So this is going to improve the multi-thread because typically when you're running all cores maxed out, the frequency is going to dial back for stability reasons, and that means it's going to fall into that 4.5 to 5 gigahertz region. Now, for high frequency, this is going to be the gaming performance. So we're going to set this to negative 20 because we're going to be a little bit more aggressive on the undervolt because the idea is by reducing the voltage further, you can boost higher and in longer durations. So that's how we can improve the gaming performance. Again, sub-zero temperature, 
doesn't really do anything so we can just leave it like that medium this is going to be around 50 degrees celsius we need that to be negative 20 and then maximum and then max high temperature we also need that to be negative 20. so this is really all that you need to do you need to change medium and you need to change high and you need to choose whatever magnitude negative value you want leave maximum alone for now because that doesn't really for my own testing it doesn't really change anything on the 9700x because it you can't really go beyond 5.5 gigahertz so you're never really going to be touching the maximum frequency region however that being said we can combine this with curve optimizer to get even better performance so with curve optimizer an example of an advanced or like a simple a simple curve optimizer with this would be negative 10. negative 10 combined with the negative 15 for medium frequency means that the all core load will have around a negative 25 offset and then for the gaming we're going to have a 20 on curve shaper plus the 10 so we're going to on curve optimizer so we're going to have around a negative 30 offset for gaming so the nice thing about this is stock minimum and low and maximum are still not affected by curve shaper but keep in mind that because i have set a negative 10 now the entire curve has that negative 10 so now my minimum my low and my max frequencies all have that negative 10 curve optimizer applied just like in the past now if you want to do a more advanced overclock or, or undervolt you can do per core and you can basically tune each individual core based off of where it sits in the hierarchy meaning is it one of the best cores or is it one of the average cores so what I've done here is I have set my best two cores which is core number two and core number four to have a positive offset of five which means I've actually reduced the amount of negative offset I'm giving them plus five on curve optimizer combined with the negative on curve shaper which means five minus 15 becomes negative 10 for medium frequency for my best two cores that way we can have the best longest duration single thread boost on the best performing cores now the other the last thing that i will mention is with pbo you can also use a scalar control to manually force the maximum frequency to scale up a little bit. So the maximum override is up to 200 megahertz. So this in theory means that we can try to get it to force the CPU to boost beyond that 5.5 gigahertz for a 9700X. And what you will find with, with 10X and 200 on a positive clock override we can hit around 5.6 almost touching 5.7 on the top cores so this will dramatically improve the multi-thread performance as well as the gaming performance so let's kind of get into windows now and showcase how this looks okay so once we're in windows i went ahead and i did a cinebench r23 one just to show you guys the effects of doing the overclock and using curve shaper and you can see with this with this overclock combined with the undervolt capability of curve shaper as well as using curve optimizer on a per core basis we have we've pulled in a score of 24104 so that is about 11% faster than the stock score which is around 21500 or so based off of my own video go check out my review of the 9700x that shows the stock and the PBO so this is better than the PBO score because the PBO score was about 23,200 or so now we're doing 24,104 with the curve shaper enabled those are my thoughts on curve shaper and how to use it we will be doing some more advanced guides on memory as well as the dual CCD CPUs so I do plan on 
showcasing how to overclock and optimize a 9950X flagship CPU. So if you are interested in that, get subscribed to the channel. And as always, guys, I'll catch you in the next video. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.